Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'm really honored and happy to present like a short report on cholera deaths recorded in Uvira in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo over the last uh, two years. So I'm actually presenting on behalf of a, a multi-institutional team with collaborators from the Johns Hopkins University, Oxfam DRC, the DRC Minister of Health, the Institut National de Recherche Biomédicale, University of Utah, and the London School of Hygiene and, and Tropical Medicine. So, so we, we know that the, the estimates of the burden of cholera, even the estimate that came out last, last week, are really um, uncertain because of uh, lack of capacity for biology confirmation of cholera in countries uh, highly burdened, also because of limited documentation of community cases and, and deaths of cholera. And we know that in, in most resource-limited countries where cholera is happening, deaths reports coming from passive uh, facility-based surveillance are also likely an underestimate of the true mortality uh, because um, of like limited access to health facilities, because sometimes of incentives for underreporting, and also because of again, limited access to a laboratory confirmation of, of cholera. So Uvira offers a unique opportunity to have like a better insight into cholera mortality in a resource limited setting. So uh, Uvira is um, a small, a relatively small city located uh, on the northwestern shore of the Tanganyika Lake in South Kiev province in Eastern DRC with uh, approximately 280,000 inhabitants. And cholera is known to be endemic in Uvira since uh, the 1978, when the first ever documented cholera outbreak in DRC uh, occurred. And when actually the first uh, cholera vaccine was deployed in, in DRC, that one was an injectable uh, vaccine. And thanks to a project aiming to assess the impact of uh, a wa uh, water supply infrastructure improvement intervention in Uvira, RDTs have been introduced in routine surveillance of cholera in Uvira since April 2016. So you can see that Uvira really has um, uh, good data, uh, historical data on cholera, and we have confirmation data uh, with RDTs uh, for now uh, seven years. Uh, we, we put in place a cholera surveillance system in Uvira to, to study the impact of mass vaccination campaigns that were organized by the DRC Ministry of Health with support with the WHO in, in 2020. And we started our like evaluation project in September, 2021. Uh, since then we are recruiting, we are enrolling in our surveillance, uh, all cases of acute water diarrhea presenting to two public health facilities officially designated to treat cholera in Uvira. We are also conducting a sub-study aiming to assess the effectiveness of the Uvicol Plus vaccine, which has been deployed in, in these vaccination, vaccination campaigns. So for every suspected cholera case, we are recruiting two uh, types of samples, uh, like direct stool and rectal swab, uh, for all patients consenting to participate in the study. Almost actually all patients uh, do provide a written consent for, for our studies. And before September last year, we were sending wet filter papers to our reference laboratory in Goma, the INRB lab laboratory. But in September, doing culture on site after we refurbished, we, like, we constructed a, a laboratory which is really helpful in getting almost real-time uh, culture results. Uh, in Uvira, we don't have, unfortunately, a structured uh, community-based surveillance system uh, for cases and even for, for cholera deaths. Yeah, so this is what uh, I was saying. We, for each patient, we are collecting two types of samples and we are doing uh, RDTs on both samples. And we are preserving also samples on wet and dry filter papers. 
for additional uh, analysis. And we are now doing culture on, on site in, in Uvira. So I will show on the next slide how this has changed our, uh, the sensitivity of culture, uh, culture result in Uvira. Yeah, so this is, these are some photos of our, our lab. Uh, as you can see, we are, we are really, it's a relatively small lab, but it has all what is required for high quality uh, culture results. And we, we have also uh, put in place a, a dashboard, which is also accessible by, by some uh, Ministry of Health officials. Here we, we can follow uh, the recruitment of, of cases in, in cholera treatment facilities. And we can even have like a, an epigraph. Uh, you can zoom on a, a specific uh, time period you want. We also have like, um, we can shift between RDT result, culture result, and, and PCR results. So for now, we are we have not yet started to do a PCR in DRC. We are develop we are optimizing our PCR assay, and we hope to get some results uh, by the end of of this year. We can also see like the number of patients who have received uh, the cholera vaccine and the number of doses received by different patients thanks to this uh, online real-time uh, dashboard. So these are like, this is the summary of a uh, laboratory test we have been doing in Uvira. You can see in the, in the, rain, uh, the red box here, uh, this, these are the cases that we recorded in Uvira during the first outbreak that occurred after we started our projects in Uvira. And back then we were sending all uh, samples to the reference laboratory with some delay. Uh, and you can see uh, here in the last column, the positivity uh, rate on culture for samples collected during that period was uh, about 40%. It ranged between 37 and 45%. But after we, we have uh, built our laboratory on site, uh, actually, the positivity rate still uh, on this last column really uh, improved. It ranged uh, uh, in the middle of outbreaks. Uh, it, it can reach even uh, 80%. So it's really uh, what uh, one would expect uh, when culture is, is done within the next the, the few hours of, of a patient admission to a cholera treatment facility. Uh, now, when it comes to deaths, we recorded uh, 27 deaths over the, the last uh, 25 months. Uh, actually, we recorded uh, 2,180 suspected cases, of which 98% um, have a confirmatory, a confirmatory result, culture or PCR. We, we also recorded uh, six community deaths of which uh, we managed to like to perform culture on on two uh, two, two two people who, who died in Uvira. Actually, we these are patients who died on their way to the CTC to the cholera treatment facilities, and we were we were able to collect uh, rectal swabs um, after consent uh, received from from the family. So actually, the deaths uh, I'm going to talk about on the next slide were recorded over like um, the last two years. Uh, so we here on this uh, plot we we see like we have we have had three relatively distinct uh, peaks uh, in Uvira. Uh, on top here we have the deaths uh, recorded almost uh, in the middle of outbreaks and uh, on, down uh, on top we have the the cases that uh, survived. So uh, this table actually this table compares the health facility deaths uh, with uh, cases that survived in the cholera treatment facilities. We can see that uh, actually the, the median age of deaths was double that of cases who uh, survived. So deaths, um, deaths tend to occur uh, in older individuals. We, we don't see any difference by gender. We, we, don't, we, we can see as expected that a higher proportion of patients who die in the treatment facilities are admitted while in dehydration, like in, in severe dehydration compared to, to patients who, uh, who survived. This is the dehydration status on, on admission. And what is really troubling in, in, in this data is that 
two thirds of deaths that occur in the treatment facilities were recorded after at least one day uh, spent in the treatment facilities. These actually uh, are probably uh, avoidable deaths if uh, the quality of care was probably uh, optimal. And here again, you, you, we have some information about the vaccination status of uh, deaths and cases. We see that we have like lower proportion of deaths who were vaccinated with at least one dose of the cholera vaccine compared to, uh, to, to, to patients who, who survived. And this table here uh, presents like a kind of a summary of the case fatality ratio uh, based on um, the data we have in Uvira. The overall case fatality ratio combining the facility and the community deaths was about 1.2% which is a bit consistent with previous reports we had from, from Uvira. And you can see when we try to stratify the case fertility ratio by age, we have a really unacceptably high um, fertility, case fertility ratio uh, in older individuals. Whether you, we use only like the clinical case definition, where we use the confirmation by RDTs, or where we look at cases confirmed by culture, or PCR, like older individuals tend to be uh, more at risk of, of death uh, in the treatment facilities compared to, to younger age groups. So in, in conclusion, we would say that um, the, the case fatality ratio we see in, in this uh, study is relatively higher than the, like, the threshold of 1%, but it, it's not too far from what we had from previous reports giving some assurance in, in, in these estimates. And the, the mortality estimated from this uh, passive surveillance system is likely an underestimate of the, the true mortality because we, as I said, we don't have like an active community-based surveillance system that would allow us to proper document what is happening in the community. The community deaths uh, that we are reporting in this study were uh, reported to us by, I would say by, by chance. We would see like a nurse who knows someone in the community who died in a condition suspect of cholera would report that to the study team and we'd go there and, and make some documentation. So we really didn't have like a well-structured community-based system that could identify all suspected deaths in the community. We have a very high, um, case fatality ratio among individual age uh, 60 years and older. And most deaths actually occurred within after at least one day spent uh, in the city still. Probably uh, improving the quality of care, especially for older individuals, could be helpful in uh, reducing the, uh, the mortality burden related to cholera in endemic settings like Uvira. Thank you very much for your attention.